this morning I was feeling all wrong Couldn't find any reason For a happy song Then I had some coffee And I washed my face And my little world fell Into place So I know you're busy and you have a lot of work to do. Do you have a few more minutes for some Q&A? Of Q &A? course, yes, of course. Okay. Well, don't hesitate to tell us if you have to go. I mean, we could talk no. your head off for hours, so you're going to have to tell us. So, <laughs> Okay, so wait, I think I had one more thing I wanted to ask you before we do this. Oh, I do. I have one more thing before we get into the questions. Okay. Okay. All right. So one of the stories I told during the jazz on the move that I did, and it actually got its own personal round of applause. And I thought that was great being a manager <clears throat> and talking about the Disney story. Maybe you don't want to dwell on that. Maybe you like telling it. That's up to you. <clears throat> but it is a fascinating story and it is important. I I am constantly harping on musicians to understand their value and understand the minute they start accepting money, they have a business. And it's not just about getting up on the stage and playing anymore. They have obligation, they have opportunity, and they need to take advantage of all of it. So anyway, the, the Disney story and the, the lawsuit and everything, I know it's not happy, but it is really important, I think, for people to know you can, if you don't want to tell it, I'll just tell oh. everyone to look it up, but. No, 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 uh, it's, I'm happy to tell it because she, first of all, working on Lady and the Tramp, she absolutely loved and respected and was in awe of Walt Disney. Yeah. And that was one of the most magical uh, career experiences for her and one that she was most proud of. I mean, and it, and so enduring those songs and mm -hmm. that movie, the story, everything about it was really she was couldn't have been more proud so fast forward you know in 1950 well let's see so she wrote those songs and performed those songs in 1953 and she was paid you know just a few thousand dollars for that which back then was was good right yeah, and then yeah 
fast forward into the 80s and and this new technology comes out called the home video cassette and the VHS, <laughs> you know, and it was the top grossing video of the year that year. And my grandmother went out and did a lot of promotion for it. She went and did the Today Show at the Sleeping Beauty's Castle at Disneyland. And she mm -hmm. was waiting for that big royalty check to come in. She's thinking, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm going to have this new source of revenue. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then it never came in. And they said, oh no, we paid you back in 1953. And she said, mm -hmm. well, you've created a new technology you've created a new way to make money and the music was an integral part of the story and i need to be paid for that and all artists need to be paid for mm -hmm. this technology not just her and so she sued the disney company it took years and years and yeah. it it was at a time when her health wasn't great and it took a toll on her and it took it was she had to just fire herself up to do it. And um, yeah. and I went to court with her many times during that summer and uh, she won. Yeah. She won yeah. the case she and did. it redefined home, it redefined home video rights. Yeah. And so that even years later when I was in college and I was studying entertainment law, that case was in our textbook. Oh, and wow. I was like, wow, well, could I be more proud uh, of yeah. that? And yeah. and so it opened the doors for other people to yeah. collect as well. And it was precedent setting. And uh, she was always about artists' rights and artists being fairly compensated. I think she would have a heart attack if she saw streaming. <laughs> if she saw what Oh my gosh, the things that we're having to deal with now with YouTube and oh, yeah. it is bootlegs and public domain stuff over in the United Kingdom. It is a it is a battle and it would drive her crazy, honestly. Yeah. I've been in, I've, I've played on some movie soundtracks and Smoking the Bandit and um oh, how great. A couple of things like that. And uh, one of them I was in the movies uh, sitting in the movie uh, with my husband for a perfect world, the and that was a detective story with um, Kevin, Kevin Costner, Costner who was yeah. a car thief, and he always stole a car that had a radio. He always wanted to have sound, and so we're watching it and eating our popcorn, and and uh, on his radio in the picture came on um, a Rusty Draper song that I had played on in 1963. This was 20 years later. And I said, um, does that sound like Willie Nelson to you? Because that was whose record it was. It was Nightlife, wasn't it? Yeah. And my husband said, I don't think so. And I listened and listened underneath the you know, dialogue. And um, it was Rusty Draper. And so <laughs> the next Monday morning, I went to the union. And it turns out that the president, who was a guitar player, was on the same session. And he ch chased down the bass player and the drummer. And it was just the four of us. But um, it was in the movie. So he said, well, they owe us money because it's now called a new use. Oh, yeah. If you use it for something else. So right. did they, they not have that then or the, did they just ignore it? Well, they did have, you know, synchronization rights and but yeah. this was a, uh, they didn't feel that they didn't interpret it that way. They, yeah. they looked at it, um, yeah. it. Actually, the whole lawsuit hinged upon really the definition of the word transcription. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So they, mm -hmm. they had to fight that out. And, you know, it, I know that there were, a lot of hard feelings between Disney and my grandmother for a long time. Hopefully that's water under the bridge now. I mean, it's just, that's just business. And yeah. Yeah. Um, she, that experience for her was just the highlight of one of the highlights of her career. So it's an, a monumental performance. She could have, she could have done so much um, voiceover work. That's a whole yeah. other thing that I know, you know, Oh, she man. had all these. Oh, she was so good at accents. 
<laughs> she was so good at, at accents. Could and she did it in her music. music. I mean, it's you know, she loved to imitate uh, Billie Holiday. <laughs> you oh, yeah. sound oh. just like her. Yeah, I've got some recordings of her imitating her, and oh, it's very amazing. Funny. I'm yeah. so glad you have all of that. I'm just so glad it's in the right hands. You know, not everyone has a holly to manage. You know, the important things and and. A lot of jazz musicians, they keep finding recordings and, you know, and, and not to say they're not in good hands, but they don't all necessarily have somebody that's around the clock managing things. So yeah. Well, I'll to. tell you something that I think I'm very fortunate that my grandmother only had one child and that was yeah. my mom. And, mm -hmm. and then me and my two brothers. So our family's small. There weren't like kids with this husband and kids with that husband and different, yeah. there wasn't, we yeah. were spread apart. So I see with other states, some of the problems come with different families mm -hmm. and not those families don't always see eye to eye. So here, everything is really in one place, which makes it manageable. And we have a family, um, you know, my mom's no longer with us, but my brothers are very supportive and grateful. They're just so grateful. Like, oh, thank God you're doing this because we, we couldn't do this, you know? Yeah. So and it makes yeah. it nice for me. So I, sure. I'm i fortunate that way. Um, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Okay. I have some Q&A Q &A. for you. <laughs> Actually, there's Q&A for all of us. Um, I'm going to... These are a little bit at random. I didn't prioritize, so I might shuffle here a little bit. Okay. Um, this one, I love this one. Um, you, somebody wants to know, somebody said, loved Peggy, very sexy lady for the late 40s, 50s. Was that a real beauty mark on her face or was it makeup? This is what I love about it. This woman wanted to be Peggy Lee. Um, she said, it was always accented. I had one and I loved it in those days, but I'm 82 now and it's not doing me any favors. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she wants to know, I think she's envious. Was that a real beauty mark or not? That was a real beauty mark. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, was. And then, but I will tell you, she would fill it in mm -hmm. with a little yeah. eyeliner or uh, eyebrow pencil. Because yeah. when you, she would put her makeup on, it would blend in, and so yeah. she, would, you know, give it a little yeah. dark coloring. But give yeah. it a little, give, give it a little love. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> who? Okay, this one's fun. Who would you most like to hear record Peggy's songs now? Well, that is a really good question, and you know, it's. I've been working a little bit um, this past year with Billie Eilish. Mm -hmm. With She was so wonderful to um, be a part of my grandmother's centennial celebration. I would love to hear her do yeah. something. I would love to hear her sing one of my grandmother's songs. But um, honestly, I like hearing, I, I know I'm some, like I'm, making this up but i love hearing anybody sing her songs i well, of course I hear, you know that's that's it it's like you're singing her songs i love you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well i always sing peggy lee songs on my I, moments like this is one of my favorite songs to sing oh, I used to uh, and i love being here with you i sing both of them on almost every gig but oh that's so good uh, bg introduced this is great <clears throat> so bg's from kentucky and we were up um, just doing some family research many years ago. This is like 2012 or 13, I think. Her county was, is or was, I don't know, a dry county. So we had to bring up all of our libation for the weekend. <laughs> we may or may not have consumed a little too much of it one night and the Kentucky whiskey. And we ended up at a breakfast joint the next morning. And I was like, oh, my God, I have to drive back to Nashville. This is going to hurt. <laughs> and she said, you have to hear this album. It's the sexiest album you'll ever hear. And it was live at Basin Street East. Oh, yeah. And she's like, there's a tune on it. You need to know it. You need to learn it. And it was moments like this. Yeah. But when I got into the car, I pulled it up and I dialed it up and I bought it on iTunes. I bought the, the studio recording and the live recording. And that 
live recording, she was just hit on the head. It's the sexiest thing ever. I love it. And and the the arrangement, everything about it was just perfect. So well, thank you. I th her live recordings and well, just seeing her live was a was like we talked about a magical experience. And mm -hmm. I I tell my kids and my husband all the time. You have to listen to the Basin Street album. You have to listen mm -hmm. to the Live at the Copa album. Yeah. You have to listen to um, Baby and the, Beat. the Beat, yes, from Miami and uh, with George Shearing. And oh, that's just, I wanted, yeah. yeah, you just have to hear it. Story about that. There was a magic that would happen when she had an audience in front of her. Yeah. I wanted to tell you about the Miami thing. I, I oh. left that out. Um, when I came to town, I worked for an ad agency for six months and writing copy. And um, then they closed down and I found um, a job. Some friends told me that a, a new um, Capitol Records guy was coming to town and they were going to build a building because Capitol didn't have a, a presence here, but they had some artists from here. And uh, so I met him and um, had an interview and lunch with him. And uh, he was a, a former big band singer and had gone to work for Ken Nelson at, at Capitol in L.A. And he was married and they were moving back and he wanted a one girl office. And uh, so we talked for like two hours. And he called me back and he said, I've got to see one more person, but I think you're the one. And he called me the next day and said, you want to work for me? And I said, yes. So I left the ad, what was left of the ad agency. And because he was a musician too, we had the best time with that, all that stuff. And I kept getting things, you know, because they would send everything from the code. Right. And uh, we just... <clears throat> just being with that crew because they were all, you know, major producers and stuff. And um, Ken Nelson came in one time and he had a, a bad tooth and he asked me, he said, you know a dentist while I'm here? <laughs> so I called my <laughs> dentist and got him in that day so he could get his tooth fixed. And then Joseph Cedar was the head of Capitol then. And he came in in a black limousine and a long black coat and an entourage. And I'm like, oh, I'm sunk because I don't take shorthand. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good memory and Paul let me do whatever I wanted. I gutsed it through, I typed, <laughs> remembering what he said, not knowing a lick of shorthand. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, I had to fill out a thing after they already hired me and it said, um, how many words a minute do you type? And I thought, I don't know. And so I called a friend of mine who was a legal eagle and I said, how many words do I need to type? And she said, 65. <laughs> okay. But I stayed there for a year or so until I got married. And Paul said I was the best secretary he ever had. So we just, we got all the Peggy stuff and they sent us, you know, everything that they came out with. And it was just a really nice way to spend a year or two in my life. It was oh wow! Because they everybody was nice to me, even the secretaries when I'd had to call them. So, but oh, your, your your grandmother was very vital then because of all the things she was doing in the 63. Yeah, that's she was still uh, very active at that point. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, that what was hard was when rock and roll kind of took over and yeah. her music became less relevant and then her having to kind of adapt to the changing times, at which she she did sometimes yeah. more successfully than others. Um, yeah, but she but, had a lot of good stuff out of that. Yeah, you know, she, it's funny she as that. Really did. I, that stuff that she did now in the 70s it has like a, is having a resurgence and it sounds so good to me. That mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. Did you get to tell her about the Miami story? Oh, 
that's what I was uh, <laughs> coming up to, and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, she told me about her chapter at Capitol. Well, it's a pretty that's that's a very cool story. Yeah, but um, but now we need to tell so the Miami when, story. When the record came in with George Shearing to us. Uh, Paul said, "I was there that night." He said they sent me down there as a rookie, you know, to report on all the stuff, and uh, she and George Shearing were the opening act. And then Count Basie and Joe Williams were the following act. And both of those acts got a Grammy that year. And Paul said he sat in the, in the audience and just marveled at the way she was singing and, and what George had put up to enhance her their music. I thought they were a great team because he just, that, that's one of my favorite albums. It's all. one of mine too. Those Paul said it was just so simple, right? The just the sound is simple, yeah. and she sounds so effortless. Like I oh, love, yeah. I love, do I love you? And oh. uh, it's just, and uh, there will be another spring. That's oh, I know. I know. Yeah, you know, she wrote that song. Yeah, you know yeah. I didn't know that she wrote that with yeah. Hubie Wheeler. Yes. Yeah, I oh. love that. Uh, the message. Oh, Don't yeah. cry, there'll be another spring. Our yeah. hearts will laugh again and sing again. So wait to, for oh. me to then. The I, day I to ask you, I'm sorry, Monica, I'm still I, let me Let me say something quickly on this one. Um, this isn't meant to be sad. This is all good, but uh, poignant. Um, I lost my dad unexpectedly and... Um, I had to drive a long distance to get to my family. And, you know, when you're in your car by yourself and you've got to deal with those things, it, it actually was probably a blessing because it gives you some time just to get in back into your own body. And all I could think about was that song. I kept thinking about that song the whole time I was in the car, like seven hours. And so when I finally got there and you want to put something out because people are sending you messages and whatever, um, I just quoted the song. I just wrote out the lyrics to the song and said that's to really everyone. Nice. Yeah. That's the so. power right there. Of exactly. Music. That would make yep. my grandmother so happy to know that something <laughs> that came from her heart helped yeah. you. At yeah. a painful time in your life. That oh yeah, I, yeah. I have sent that song to a few people when they've lost their loved ones mm -hmm. because to me, there's a it was very comforting and hopeful sure. and yeah. and there's something very spiritual about it. Like sure. our work, our hearts will laugh again and sing yeah. again. So wait for me, you know. Yeah. And and then the yeah. the beautiful like be glad the bird is on the wing and you know yeah. it's very mm -hmm. uh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. gorgeous lyric and mm. actually Seth MacFarlane just did a cover of it which I thought was oh, so really yes Great. he did a beautiful job oh he's a good singer yeah I I, I, have a I love people like Seth because he has a whole new audience oh, and yeah. you know you say people ask you know you, you get asked who is Peggy Lee well it's the the younger musicians like the Michael Bublé's and the the, the Seth MacFarlane's and, um, and and folks like that who are attracting a larger audience than maybe, you know, a genre concentrated mm -hmm. group. Um, that's all part of it. And I'm so glad that you recorded When my kids watch uh, Family Guy with Seth <laughs> MacFarlane's show, I will point out to them, listen to the music in the background. That yeah. is a beautiful, rich orchestra that's not like just done on a computer that is a yeah. live orchestra that, yeah, yes, that yes. Seth is using and and a lot of those players were people that played with frank sinatra and and i'm yeah. sure you that you know like chuck berghoffer and mm -hmm. uh they're on there and, and i think Seth pete chrisley plays on a lot of those doesn't he or did. i think he moved pete chrisley i think he moved to seattle or something but yeah he was on the tonight show for a long time yeah, be. but um yeah. i think he did a lot of that stuff it's it's brilliant. It's great. It's really great stuff. You're right. I'm glad he's doing it. Okay, okay. Ben, I'll stop interrupting you. Now. I want to ask you about um, "Don't Smoke in Bed." Oh, about the writing. I what I got from some book 
was that Willard Robinson started it mm -hmm. and, uh, and your grandmother finished it. And then the article said that she, she gave all of the rights to Willard and his family. Yes. So what, the story that I heard is that my, both of my grandparents, Dave Barber, my grandfather, mm -hmm. who um, was a guitar player in the Benny Goodman Orchestra, yeah. Uh, and my grandmother were working with Willard on that song. And so they contributed in some way. I don't know exactly what happened with that, but it was decided that he would get the credit. And mm -hmm. there was some financial issue apparently going on at mm -hmm. the time. And my grandmother um, gave that the, the songwriter credit to him. But what's interesting mm -hmm. is that it's in my grandparents' publishing catalog. So mm -hmm. they benefit too. <laughs> so it's still, yeah, so it's still in our catalog. Yeah. That's great. That's, um, yes. Somebody asked if you, do you, do you manage your grandfather's um, estate or his catalog as well? Yes. Do you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's Absolutely. great. Yes. They're, they're tied together. For oh, are they? Okay. They, okay. they have a wonderful yes. team. Yeah, they were a great team, weren't they? That's and yeah. you know, it's too bad that marriage-wise that it didn't last. Um, my, he, they say my grandmother always said that was the love of her life. She had three other marriages after him. She called them costume parties, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I just so she didn't take you know. But that was the love of her life, and she always imagined that they would get back together and they would end up together, and oh. then. He he passed away just suddenly. At, he was fifty two, I believe. Um, oh, wow. He had just gone to a Christmas party and came home and had a brain hemorrhage. Oh, mm. she was absolutely <clears throat> devastated. Like some oh. some part of her died with him that day. Oh. You know? Did yeah. you know him when you were little? I never knew him. Oh. No. I didn't know him. He died a couple years before I was born. He knew he my brother, so he got to see his first grandchild. Oh. Yeah. And my whole childhood growing up, all I heard from my grandmother and my mom was about how amazing he was. He was an alcoholic. He had he had some problems, but they just said he was just this fantastic, charismatic, talented, witty, dry guy. And I'm very close to his niece, who I'm named after, Holly. And um, so she keeps him alive for me now. That's great. That's good. Yeah. That's very cool.
Yeah. Um, well, this is interesting. The next question just happened to pop up is, um, what do you value or feel um, is most important regarding Peg's legacy? What do you think about that? When you think about what you want to pass on? Well, the most important thing is the music, right? I mean, it's the music. Yeah. yeah. Just that's it, that she, not just the recordings, but the writing, the way that it just seems to transcend time, not all of it, but many of her songs, she, she recorded over 1,100 masters and she's written almost 300 songs. And the fact that here we are in 2020, almost 2021, and we're still talking about this yeah. music, um, oh, yeah. that is the enduring legacy. She said that there was no specific genre that she was attracted to most. I mean, obviously she loved jazz and blues and swing, and but she yeah. said there was just good music or bad music. It didn't yeah. matter the genre. And she yeah. would resonate with a lyric and um, and that would be that. And she'd hook onto a lyric and then she'd think, okay, so now who's the perfect arranger for this? Because that mm -hmm. would be the next thing that would come into play. And then once she had the arranger in the charts, it's like, okay, so who's going to help me bring this to life? Which guitar player, which pianist, which bass player? And and he was just bringing it all together. And here it is. She said, yeah. I want to leave you a legacy. It's going to outlive me. And it's like, okay, well, she was very psychic. <laughs> I, I love the Cy Coleman story with Big, Big Spender. She's right. like, this is my song. You know, I can make a hit out of this. Right. That's, you know, he saw or envisioned something. A chorus line singing it. And then she said, oh, no, I, I can make a a hit out of it yeah did she, she ever? Did. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, she did man i wish i had her intuition that's for sure <laughs> me too <laughs> um <laughs> um okay bg there's a question in here actually this is for anyone this was not asked this was not designated to anyone in particular um if you could have written or own um another composer's songbook which would it be is there anyone else that you wish you could get their, your hands on their catalog? Harold Arlen. I want to hear Gigi's answer. <laughs> Harold Arlen? Her Harold Arlen, yeah. Harold Arlen. Well, my grandmother I, would have said Johnny Mercer, probably. I, well, that, that would be my next one. And they, they wrote together a lot. Mm -hmm. I got to meet mm -hmm. Johnny Mercer one time. I was so thrilled. <laughs> he came here when um, Moon River was a big hit. And several country artists had done Moon River, and they were not, all this stuff was nominated for Grammys and the Country Music Hall of Fame and all this stuff that we have every year. And I was playing in a little club, and Johnny came to a little radio show that was five days a week that I played on, and uh, with a, with a trio and some other things. And uh, unbeknown to us. When he left the studio with his entourage, he stopped and asked the secretary who we were and where would we play tonight. And so we were playing in our club gig six nights a week at the Silver Slipper. Oh. <laughs> it, was a, it was a steakhouse with a little bit of a dance floor and, and a trio. And here came a couple of the executives from WSM that night with Johnny and his entourage. And they all went to sit down and he came over and sat on the piano bench with me. And he stayed there most of the night. We sang and played all his songs. And uh, he got lightly drunk and we all did, I guess. But um, after that, he gave me his mailing address and I, we corresponded for a while before he died. So. Wow. Now I have to ask you a question. Have you, written all of this down and talk okay. about the legacy all these stories you have BG. yeah i'm i'm yeah. i've got a book so i've got oh my gosh. i've got notebooks all over the place and I've, i bought a typewriter because i like to type and uh, so i'm the pandemic is going to help me get the thing out at some point okay i'll tell you that's really important i will tell you as someone who is running a legacy I always, you know, I've told it to other singers that I've met uh, along the, you know, over the years, like keep track of things, leave, because you will leave this behind. Yeah. And 
I, I wish it. now yeah. I could ask my grandmother so many questions. I wish I would have paid more attention to this or that. I'm and I'm yeah. so grateful for every little scrap of information mm -hmm. I can find because here I'm left speaking for her. And I, yeah. and I take it really seriously. Like I don't want to speak out of turn and say something that wouldn't really be true to her. So I really look at what she's left behind for me. And it mm -hmm. is a thank God, a treasure trove. And when you have stories and experiences like yeah. you do, BG, you know. Yeah, I've, uh, I've made a lot of notes and I've, I've kept a, a little card file for episodes of things that happened. Yeah. And people say the darndest things to musicians, you know. And uh, so I always thought that I would do that. And so I started pretty early on making notes and everything. Good. So yeah. Good. I, I harp on her a lot. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, good. Um, I'm glad you're harping a little bit too. It makes it my good. life a little bit easier. That, that encourages me. <laughs> we actually have it. We have another writer friend who um, wants so much to help in the process and 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 be a part of it. He just adores BG, and I think it's a it's a gift to have somebody who wants to be a part of that yes. actual. He's going to be my proof. literary process. Yeah. So. Good, because it is daunting and mm -hmm. overwhelming. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, oh, um, I'm going to answer that. I would love to have, if not Peggy Lee, I'd love to have the catalog of Cole Porter. That's right. what I would like. That would be another, right? Yeah. Or Irving Berlin. I mean, or oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. or Cy Coleman. I mean, right. any yeah. of them. I'll take it. I'll take it. Right. Yeah. Um, I love charming. I love charming songs. So they're. Charming. Gershwin's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> had to fight Feinstein on that one. So, yes. oh, okay. Um, this one's a fun question, I think. Um, in what ways are you most like your uh, grandmother, and what ways are you the most different? Well, I would say the most like her. She taught me about being organized. And I think that is, the, I learned that from her. So I'm, and I guess I have that perfectionist side of me too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. my colleagues tell me that all the time. Like, okay, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect or, you know, but I, I am um, very organized. Um, not like her. I, I think that, um, her life was so extraordinary and so, big and over the top where I have a very simple life actually. And I really am like, you know, there's when you know me outside of my work, people don't even really know what I do. I'm a soccer mom. I have a very, I have a, you know, just a simple life. Yeah. And her yeah. life was so big. big. So yeah. I'd say that's, that, that's really the big difference. Hmm. Yeah. Hers was a lot more glamorous than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this is, uh, somebody wanted to know if you stay in uh, close connection with her friends and family, like uh, families of her close friends. It sounds like Lou Levy, you stay in, in touch with some some of that family. Do you do you stay in touch? Is that like still a reunion of yes. sorts? Well, it's weird right now with COVID. Well, but sure. absolutely, I do keep in touch with people that were close to her, and it makes me really happy to do it. In fact, yeah, just this week, I was sending out Christmas cards, and um, I sent it to several of her like really good friends. A lot of people, of course, have passed away, but sure. um, and I do it on Facebook. I love keeping in touch with people on Facebook, like. And people that I've never even met, but I feel a bond through, like Nelson Riddle's daughter or mm -hmm. Maxine Sullivan's daughter. My grandmother oh, absolutely wow. loved Maxine Sullivan, loved Nelson yeah. Riddle. Um, I keep in touch with other um, performer estates like the Sinatras. Um, I'm, yeah. I, I'm very close to them and um, got to know the Nat King Cole estate and mm -hmm. Mel Torme's kids and... Um, I mean, so many people, but also the musicians. Like I, if I see a picture of her with a musician, I like, I send them the photo or, and I just oh, sent a great. bunch of Christmas CDs the other day to um, friends of hers that 
I know, I just know yeah. that they would appreciate getting a CD and being reminded. And yeah. It, yes. So absolutely. In fact, one of our dear friends, we used to meet a couple times a year for lunch and just, it's Aww. just like so wonderful to tell the yeah. stories and be connected. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is neat. And, and to pass it down to another generation of right. you know, family and, and maybe right. musicians, maybe not, but to right. keep stories alive. Yeah. That's neat. I will tell you, I don't know why it popped into my head, but when um, I went and saw Hamilton on Broadway mm. years ago and, and I didn't really know that much about what it was about. I, I knew of course the basic premise, but what I didn't know was how much it was about legacy mm -hmm. and that that last song who lives who dies who tells your story mm -hmm. i mean i was bawling my eyes out Aww. because I feel like that is that's part of what i'm doing is yeah i'm just <laughs> yeah. telling her story i'm just keeping her story alive and and my even my position is temporary in doing that i tell my kids now please listen to what I'm saying because one day I'm not going to be here and then you're going to be the ones telling her story, you know, because wow. the music will outlive me too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Whew. That just gave me goosebumps just a little. <laughs> um, okay. This is, <laughs> this one's really off subject. We get a lot of random questions, but this one, okay. someone who wants to know where I buy my jewelry. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't buy my jewelry. I'm given jewelry. I'm very lucky. BG loves to pass down jewelry. I've got jewelry for my family. Thank you, whoever wrote that. Um, but I don't. I don't buy jewelry for myself very often. I. These are Aunt Shugs. Yeah, right, Beach. These yeah, are my my aunt. I, I actually bought them for her when I was on tour with somebody, um, and they're handmade silver with a, a red coral mm. and uh yeah and so it just looked like you should have those i think you're <laughs> they right they look very uh, nice well it's funny i love i love colorful pieces and some of it's costume jewelry some of it's expensive some mm -hmm. of it's real and not but um you know i'm not a i'm not a real flashy person i like classic style um my this is my grandmother's engage. This was her engagement ring that she turned into a dinner ring. So that's kind of fun. That means something that really special. So, um, but and for those of you who are following at home, this is Rosemary's ring. The she's very she was very ornery. She would not domesticate it at all. She was a diva, and she <laughs> would tell us she made a pie. She bring a pie every year to our house for like big occasions, holidays, and such. And I fell in love with this pie. I've been looking for a recipe. I thought she'd made it until she died. And it turns out she just went to the store and bought it every year and brought it and told us it was homemade. And so my whole <laughs> life I had this like, this is my grandma's pie. This is the best pie that my grandma ever made. She lied to me. She was a liar, but she made a good story. So. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, she was fantastic. She was so silly, so silly. I have to um, say, I have my grandma's jewelry too, and I and my mom's jewelry. And I'm not wearing anything of theirs right at this moment. But whenever I go, like on a trip to New York, or I'm going to a show, I always take them along with me in something in their jewelry. It makes oh, me I love fabulous. it. Yeah, well, that has to make you feel fabulous. It does make me feel fabulous, and. I have some of my grandmother's handbags and I've got some of her wraps and things. And uh, yeah, that's pretty neat when I can take that with me, take her with me and my mom too. Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Do you have, are any of her things in museums or like anything in the Smithsonian or anything like that? Well, we've talked to the Smithsonian and uh, the Library of Congress, we've talked to, um, the Great American Songbook Foundation, and we've talked to mm -hmm. the Grammy Museum. And actually, right now, she does have some items at the Grammy Museum. Oh, great. And we are going to do some more, actually, next month. We're going to great. give them some more items. They're creating something for when people can actually go to museums yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I plan on doing is when we're done, I'm done with 
telling her story in a movie, which I'm working on right now, mm. um, then I want to donate everything. Wow. And not everything is going to end up in a museum. I'll sell things that won't go to a museum, but sure. there's, I just look at things that are, you know, like right behind me is her Grammy award for, is that all there is? And there's oh. her society singers, Ella award. And um, this is brand new award. Oh, you can't see it that she just got from the great American songbook foundation. Anyway, these things should not be just here with me. They need to be someplace where everybody can see them and enjoy wow. them. And yeah, in her charts too. I have over a thousand of her original charts. Wow. Yeah, like so they're in storage. Those need to be donated. Yeah. So that I, I'm, I'm just, guessing Feinstein's really excited about that. Well, I'm I'm excited <laughs> to talk to him about what you know. I can imagine he wouldn't be crazy about that. Yeah, I'm done all of this stuff. I just want it to be out there for people to be able to connect with it and that yeah. it will happen. I just didn't do it now because I didn't know what I was going to need it for. And, and, and You'll one know. by one, checking off yeah. the checklist of things. You'll know. Yeah. After the movie. Yeah. Well, I want to buy something. I just want to go ahead. I want, I want, <laughs> I want to just go ahead and say I'm in for something. You're in so, for something. Okay. I'm in for something. Okay. I'll let you know. I, I too am all about legacy. I will help you with this. Okay. Something. So, okay. We have one more question for you and I will leave the other questions for maybe another happy hour down the road. The last question a young artist wrote in and asked, what advice do you have for young songwriters? I actually get asked that question a lot and mm -hmm. I tell people to, well, I, I always send them over to ASCAP, first of all, to really go to the ASCAP website and there's so much valuable information on there. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the business part of it. And, and they, well, that's usually what people are asking me is the business part of it because I'm not a musician, but I do tell people just never give up, you know, yeah. just never give up. And collaborating with someone is really good. It helps kind of mm -hmm. stir the juices, but BG, you would be able to answer this question better than me. Probably. <laughs> BG, what would you say? What would you say? Well, all, all the things that you just said, first of all, go to ASCAP and all that. Um, First of all, I think if you're going to write lyrics, um, that you should study other lyrics and poetry. Poetry is a big deal. Right. Um, just to, and I, I grew up with that because my grandmother was a school teacher. Um, but the other thing is, find it if you want to just start from scratch, find a collaborator like somebody. Uh, writing the or you might write the melody and somebody else would write the lyric but either way uh, if you work with other people sometimes you'll get critiques that you need and uh, and then just go at it you know if you have a rhyme and uh, you want to set it to music just see just you know you can start out with <laughs> mary had a little lamb and <laughs> see how the things fit um, it's kind of shoot and hit and shoot and miss kind of thing. But but if you try it and uh, and even go to, if you can find um, some seminars for songwriters and stuff, in Nashville they have a lot of that kind of thing where people can write and talk about songwriting. And so just take a little of everything, I guess, and uh, do what ASCAP tells you. Right. Yeah, I do. I have met some people who are just kind of up and coming with their songwriting. And mm -hmm. the one thing I tell them is what my grandmother told me, which is try to absolutely keep your publishing. Right. If at all humanly possible. Some people can't because they need to get a start. We all had to get a start somewhere. And with yeah. my grandmother, like she did that with Benny Goodman and, um, that was her start. So she doesn't make any royalties on any Benny Goodman recordings because that was when she was just part of the 
part of the band, but we all pay our dues. But yeah, publishing, if you can keep it, that oh, is yeah. vital. Yeah. 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 Do you ever come to Nashville? I have never been to Nashville, but I'm <gasps> it's on my list. Now I got to go. We have to remedy that. Yeah, we when we can that. travel, I'm coming to see you guys. You should. I would you love should. it. I would love to go there. We would love to be your host. We would take very good care of you. So this, it would be fun. We'd have a great time. So I would love it. And actually, the person that helps me with marketing, he is like BG from Kentucky. Yeah. So I hear about Kentucky all the time. Yeah. No. <laughs> I have to go there too. That's on my list too. Ah, I'll be well. Done. Well, I can't. And next time we're in LA, we were, um, we had a date scheduled there, a couple of dates scheduled that need to be rescheduled. So when we, when we get back there, we will let you know, maybe you can. Where were you guys going to perform here? Um, well, BG and her, uh, bass player, Roger, were going to do a duo night. Actually, uh, maybe I was scheduled to do it with you. I don't remember. But, um, yeah. at Steinway in Beverly Hills, BG is a Steinway artist. But then we were going to do Feinstein's. Were you? Yeah. Okay, that's what I was wondering. That's so close to my house. And yeah. I used yeah. to go there like once a week, if not more, just to see whoever's in town. It was so nice when yeah. Michael took that over and started bringing in like New York and yeah. here. And I was yeah. just before we started talking, I was talking to my friend Charlie Pignon, who runs the Frank Sinatra estate. Mm. And he, we would meet there and we would go and see people and, and we miss it so much. We can't wait to get back. When you come yeah. and perform here, we'll be there. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> we'll do that would be great. Right. Yeah. We'll do lots of Peggy Lee songs for you. Okay. But, um, I, yeah, it's, it, it'll be nice and to, to just get back out and, um, to, to make music again and just to, I'm I'm freaked out about traveling on a plane again. Yet I can't wait to do it. It's like a bittersweet. I'll probably still be double masked even after a <laughs> vaccine in my arm. But I'm so excited to be able to travel again and just yeah. get back out on the road a little bit. So, well, it's safe to stay home right now. That's for oh sure. yeah. well. It really in is. fact, in fact, let me just <clears throat> take this opportunity. You know, um, for those of you who are just watching for the first time, we started this for people in quarantine like us. There are a lot of people who don't have a choice um, and and the safest, the only option is to stay home and they're giving up livelihood and family and entertainment. And so we're doing this just to, as a, as a way of keeping your spirits high and a distraction for an hour or so every, you know, every, every other week. And um, we just ask that you wear a mask. It's, nothing political for us. We just want to be safe. We want you to be safe and we want to get over this. We want everyone to get back to work and everyone to get back to normal life. And the only way we really can see that right now is to, you know, be thoughtful and, and just wear a mask. So, um, uh, we are continuing to support live venues and small businesses. So please, um, you know, keep that in mind when you're out there and, and purchasing things and, um, uh, Holly, where can be, where do you recommend people buy Peggy Lee music? Do you have a preferred place? Uh, anywhere that they are comfortable buying music. Okay. Like, okay. I know a lot of people, Amazon. I know it's hard to find places now where you can actually go in and buy music. But uh, Brick and Water is hard. see behind me, we have two fantastic new albums that we just yeah. released this year. Tell we us about it. We have Peggy Lee here. And, uh, what a great cover. Mm -hmm. They're so powerful. Pretty. There you go. Yeah, oh, that we is were gorgeous. Just thinking, like, I love the look on her face. Yeah. It looks like she she, she owns the world. She rules out. the world, right? There. Right. She's and then we the have, um, and I love, by the way, that vinyl is coming back like this. Yeah. You know, it's so great. This is yeah. um. There's a little glare, but there's oh. ultimate Bigly Christmas. Wow. Oh. Well, go to PeggyLee.com. Yeah, PeggyLee.com. And, and, and research. If you're not familiar with Peg, make sure you become familiar. And, um, you know, chances are your favorite artist today, whether it's singer, songwriter, 
they were somehow inspired by her directly or indirectly. So it is so important that we continue to, to celebrate her and everything that she's done. I know, I know we, we do every day. So thank you, Holly. Holly is fantastic and she's working so hard to, um, to make sure that everyone knows everything about Peggy Lee. So follow her on social media. We'll make sure we have all the links in the description and just thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's great. Thank you both so much yeah. and what a pleasure to meet you both and BG, I love your album. And I really want to say too, I love that cover with the leopard and the pearls and the lipstick. Yeah, <laughs> that was the so director for that one. Well, that was so Peggy Lee and the and the playing was beautiful. Thank you well, very thank much. You very much. I, I adore her music and, and her. Oh, and, uh, thank you. So I Thanks just wanted to guys. make it really good for, for yeah. her. Thank, thank you. you all. Everybody just stay safe and just know how much yes. we appreciate you. And, safe and we will see you again. Yes. Thanks for watching everyone. Yeah. Have a good night, you guys. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Bye. I gave you a story, you gave me the gate. I wish you come back, but you say it's too late. I look kind of silly, holding the sack. I guess I'll hold it until you come back. You said someday you'd pass me by. That I'd be telling you just one too many lies. And you was right, baby. Yes, baby. You were so right. Someday